Welcome back to North Wind Ariel. Why am I dressed up in a full Gondorian Ranger outfit out here in the middle of this orchard? Is it because I'm trying to hold on to the last semblance of my whimsy that this world that we were born into is doing its best to crush out of me and I'm using this whole YouTube channel as a creative outlet to stay in touch with my inner kid playing dress up and having all this sort of imagination out here in the middle of nowhere going on my own little adventures as a 33 year old? No, it's because we are testing out one of the coolest pieces of drone software that's come across my desk. Eagle Eyes. You might have remembered that I tested Eagle Eyes out a couple weeks back along with a couple of other color finders. Turns out, I didn't even scratch the surface on what Eagle Eyes can do. After that video, the whole team over at Eagle Eyes was kind enough to give me an email and say how much they loved the video and how much I had forgotten to mention. And shortly after that, I hopped on a full-blown team call with them and they demonstrated a bunch of stuff that I didn't even know it could do. And today, I'm gonna try and rectify my sins from my last video covering Eagle Eyes by showing just what it's capable of. Now you'll remember from the first video, we used it as purely a color finder tool. We fed it all of the photos that we fed everything else and it looked for stuff out of place. Today, we're going to be using the Eagle Eyes Pilot, which goes right onto your DJI controller and scans the video footage coming back from the drone in real time to help locate targets in real time. So I am so confident in Eagle Eyes and its ability to find me that what I'm going to do is take the drone up to as high as we possibly can and I'm going to show just how well it picks me out as I walk through this orchard. I'm gonna be wearing my forest green cloak. I'm gonna be walking through all of these shadows and I can promise you, it's gonna blow you away with how well it picks me out. At time of recording, Eagle Eyes comes in two ways. Either the app you can download via the API onto your drone controller itself, or an app that you can download onto your PC or laptop. Once you've purchased it, you can use the license keys in order to activate the software. Right now you can see that I'm using the Eagle Eyes Scan, or Eagle Eyes Pilot, which overlays right on top of your drone feed. You can fly the drone directly with this Eagle Eyes app, replacing DJI Pilot essentially. But don't worry, you don't have to get rid of it. You can see on the screen that it's drawing circles around me, picking out both my motion and my color. That's exactly how Eagle Eyes works. It looks for color that is out of place and it looks for motion. When it senses a different color or motion, it draws a little circle around it to pull your eyes towards it, allowing you to zoom in and get a good look at whatever it's picking up. At 100 meters, you can see on both the wide and the zoom, it had a circle on me pretty much the entire time. There are two modes for Eagle Eyes, normal and hypersensitive. Hypersensitive lowers the threshold for the software to let you know there's something there, which can sometimes help out if you're having a hard time finding anything. Even at an altitude of 100 meters or around 300 feet, and at a range of 561 feet, the drone still picked me out perfectly. One important thing to note about the motion sensing software portion though, is that you need to hold the drone steady. If it's moving, it'll have some issues. I decided to take a walk through the actual rows of trees, seeing how well my green ranger cloak would protect me as I walked through the green trees and massive amounts of shade. And it turns out that Eagle Eyes had absolutely no issues picking out my motion as I walked. While walking through the trees, I immediately regretted not bringing my GoPro with me because I really wanted to talk about how incredible it was for it to just pick me out completely by itself. Now, Tim, time out. I can see you walking through there with my own eyes, I hear you say. Oh yeah? Well, here you go, smart guy. Here you go, wisecracker. See if you can find me walking through this orchard without really having to squint. Yeah, I bet you can't. Meanwhile, you flip right back over to Eagle Eyes, and it draws a circle on me almost immediately. Unless you have some cyberpunk Eagle Eyes sort of eyes built into your own head, or you're really good at picking out color and movement by yourself, it would take you a long time to see anything moving in the shadows of this video. But even when I ascend all the way up to my max altitude of 398 feet, it was still picking me out extremely reliably. Here you can compare both videos side by side and see how much easier it is to see me on the eagle eyes with the little bits of targeting here and there. 
These are both the same video. One is just a screen recording of the Eagle Eyes overlay, and one is the raw footage from the DJI app itself. Remember, when it comes to search and rescue and finding people, all you really need is one little clue to let you know, hey, here's where to look. Something to just help draw your eye so that then you might see something else with your own eyes that could lead you to bringing someone back home. A lot of color finders work best when used at a 90 degree angle, but working at an oblique angle is not an issue. It still picked me up even as I walked at a strange angle away from them vertically through the trees. A couple of cool things else to mention on Eagle Eyes is the fact that the color finder works in thermal imaging as well. And in something I'll go into in a different video, you can see on the top right, you can hook up this to CalTOPO, which is kind of the standard sort of search and rescue app that we use here in the United States. I didn't want to dox myself too much, so you can see exactly how it works a little bit here during a training session with one of my search and rescue guys. It's super easy to set up, super easy to use, and I promise I'll go over it in a video soon. But in the meantime, I decided to finish my walk because it was about 95 degrees and I was wearing a giant blanket, but I was severely impressed with just how well Eagle Eyes was able to pick me out wearing green in green. All right, now that we've had our fun with the ranger cloak and everything, let's go put on something a little more normal. Let's go put on backpacking gear. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're into drone search and rescue and you're trying to figure out how you can use this to not track down a ranger, but to track down someone who's been up there hiking in the hills and has gotten lost and turned around. You want to find out just how far out you can find someone with this software. So let me go change out of most of this super heavy get up, especially now that I'm sweaty after this walk. And let's go see how well it works. All right, I'm all loaded up, changed into something a lot more cooler and we're gonna go head out and take a walk around. I'm still wearing the chest rig because uh, I need somewhere to rest my drone controller when I'm walking. All right, I am over here at my rice fields now, which is a nice, big, wide open space. Look at those clouds over there. Ah, oh, it's so cool. So, I've got my big backpack on. Well, you thought I was joking? No, I wanna climb to the top of the mountain over there. But I've got my big backpack on. I've got my uh, vest. I've got this nice light blue shirt. I've mentioned it several different times. Blue is the least common color in nature. So we're gonna see how well the drone can pick me up. All the way to the end of this field is a half mile. So that'll give us a good idea. If it can pick me up from a half mile away, that's gonna be some really cool stuff. And if it can't pick me up wearing what I'm wearing right now, then I will put on my search and rescue hunter orange hat and see how well it can pick me up there. The hat just doesn't have any breathability to it. So uh, I don't wanna cook my head. And also, branding. Let's get the drone in here. I took off and flew the drone to the halfway point of the field, which puts us right around a quarter mile distance from the drone to me. I took off using a DJI Pilot app and then quickly switched over to the Eagle Eyes app, which is smooth and easy to do. As soon as it popped up, it took just a couple of seconds and then boom, was already drawing targets across me as I was just a speck on the screen. All right, so we got it right here. Let's see what happens when I start walking. Literally one step and it's picked me up. Now, a quarter mile away might not seem like much, but look at this. Look at how little you can see of me on the screen. Combine that with needing to maintain visual line of sight on your drone at all times, it is pretty significant distance away to be. So I flew out to the full length of the field an entire half mile away and it had a hard time picking me up. Interestingly enough, however, it did pick up all of the vehicles out on the interstate. Thank goodness this drone comes with a pretty significant zoom camera though, because simply swapping over to that extended the range of eagle eyes because it still was able to pick out my color and movement from this far away. All right, well, that's as much hiking out here in this heat and humidity that I can handle. So it's quite accurate out to about a quarter mile or so and about a half mile, it's give or take. I mean, if I was wearing all orange, maybe it would pick me up, but uh, it was having a hard time pick up color anyways. It was mostly off of motion and from that far out, it just was not picking anything up at a half mile. But I mean, at a quarter mile, it was dead, dead easy. Really good stuff. Let's uh, go back to Ranger Tim and wrap this up. 
All right, so now that we've run those two tests, I feel like we've gotten a pretty good idea of just how well this software works. Let's turn it over to the guys from Eagle Eyes and let them explain this software in their own words. Uh, yeah, we can do a first a little walkthrough. There are some um, new things that we're going to be demoing here. We're actually kind of taking the uh, bold move of demoing the current version of the software before release, which is always risky. So there's a little glitch. There's a glitch. I am all about testing out new softwares and testing out the glitches yeah. and everything. That's just the nature of software. The purpose of us existing uh, is to solve problems like this, where a person standing in plain view in the sun still can't see them. They're only like 70 meters away in this case. That's me somewhere in New Mexico. Computer vision system picks, picks up this kind of thing. It's looking for anomalies. So it's looking for colors or motions that uh, just jump out from the background. So I just like a bit about how our computer vision system works. It's kind of different from um, ones like uh, you'll see like the new DJIs have a computer vision system and they're kind of doing this object detection type of thing. So they'll look for people or boats or cars. And that system is it's kind of like it's pretty reliable when you have like a full frame view of a person, um, but it's not much good for uh, like SAR scenarios where you'll see like a fragment of clothing through kind of foliage. Um, so yeah, basically our type of detection is pretty different from that. You get more false positives, but you're more likely to see something that's kind of realistic in a SAR scenario, which is like, a, yeah, just bright color out through a bush or just a little bit of movement when the drone is hovering there. So that's what it's kind of made for. The motion is an anomaly detector too. So um it's only picking up motion when other things aren't moving so if i do start moving the drone a bit uh motion detector kind of goes quiet so like the uh t-rex in jurassic park uh <laughs> just uh it only sees you when everything is out on this rock here we've got some dummies somewhere so uh I'll just go through there and i think you've seen this whole process already um but never hurts to see it again i can go into um I'm not sure if you've seen this hypersensitive mode, but this uh, puts us in this kind of high sensitivity regime. Yep, I found uh, out that I, I really like that because for stuff like for stuff like dense stuff like this, I want it to be, I want false positives because yeah. at least it gives me an idea to search for. Because like right now, if I just if you handed me a JPEG of just that photo, I'm like, where do I even Ooh. start? This right yeah. here is just oh cool, we can look around at all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So um, I think we see one going off there from time to time, that little blue one down there. Actually, oh yeah, the volunteer shirt. Mark that on the map. I would just, uh, if I had the laser range finder of the, uh, if I had like the M30T, I would just mark it right there. But basically what it does is it, it puts a little red dot on the map and the red dot moves around as you look. Um, so you, you know where on the map it's, hitting and then you can basically when you mark a photo you have the choice do i want to drop that at the drone location or the laser location perfect um anyway we can zoom in on that and place a marker on the map Let's capture save and if we go to cal topo this always takes uh like 20 seconds to pop in there which is just the perfect amount of time to have like an awkward pause during a demo there it is so it should be there we, yep, in. Just up, there we go yeah so you get this photo you also get this kind of multi-scale thing which we're we're changing that in the next release because the multi-scale isn't as useful um i'm not sure if you also saw there's the option to um to actually make the drone capture a photo so uh if we fly out here and we want to get like a broad overview here and just to clarify yeah. when he's saying capture that first photo that we saw was just the standard resolution coming from the drone down to the RC controller. Yeah. And this one is actually requesting a photo from the drone. Um, so it'll capture that photo and take the full res down into the controller. And then we can actually tap on that and yeah, that's it. So you can, the idea with the high res photo is that you can now like take a detailed detection zoom. And actually it looks like we don't have dummies here, um, but you just look at the top 20 things in the image. Uh, let me see maybe i can capture one well i won't bother right now but if you have kind of like an overview of a scene and you want to see okay just run the detector over this whole scene you can use that to find the top 20 things uh, in the image now there's way more we can do with this software 
And once my trial period of it runs out, I'm absolutely buying it. This is such a cool, unique piece of software. The fact I can fly my drone with it is more than enough reason for me to spend the money to keep it. So look for plenty more videos on Eagle Eyes going forward. What would you like to see tested? What sort of scenarios would you like me to try this software in? I've got a couple ideas and I didn't get to the whole part about using the capture card on the laptop in order to scan it that way. This is more just a quick crash course on exactly how the Eagle Eyes pilot system works to get that knowledge into the hands that need it. Let us know what you would like to see tested when we come to that. Let us know what you would like to see tested more with Eagle Eyes. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Reach out to Eagle Eyes, try this crazy software, and I will see you next time.